What is up YouTube? High Tech Lab here. Um, bringing you guys a video today here in this off-grid room. A uh, couple of things going on. We're both getting prepared to take down this rack um, because we're going to have the lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells coming here in a few weeks uh, next time I'm back in town. And we're trying to get these racks all up and running. Uh, the battery's kind of happy because I'll give you a great example. Last night we were Start, each one of those peaks is the generator starting, so there's there's definitely something not happy. I mean, for, for what we should be getting in capacity out of these cells, uh, we're really not getting. And we're just going to be doing a general balance and, and clean up today, so more as it comes. So here we've gone ahead and started getting some of the batteries pulled down. Um, our process was we were load checking them on the rack, and when they were good, we were bringing them down here checking the acid and um, water level or water levels and gravity and then when they were good we were bringing them over here onto this shelf and this shelf all checked out good and I had my stepdad turn on the electric clothes dryer to put a load and we were able to pull 55 amps off this shelf alone so all these batteries are creating a nice a nice amount of uh, power for the system more as it comes. Uh, what did I do? Okay so Okay, so here, here we are, I have my, I'm doing my testing process. This is the uh, load tester. I don't know if you guys can see in there, there's a heating element in there. And I was just clipping this on to the battery, kind of like so. I've got my multimeter on there as well with my clipping probes. Clipping on and then load checking, but you'll notice this thing's not happy switch burned out on me after about 16 batteries uh load checking them it's like yeah i'm done this thing's like 30 years old so i'm gonna take it apart and and make a make my own load tester a little bit show you what that looks like right now so check this out i'll give you a great example this battery right here is at 11.96 now i just did a load test on it this, the, the switch is no good anymore, so as soon as I connect it, it's putting it under load. So watch this meter as I connect this, watch. As you can see, this battery, and this will get hot, this will start glowing red if it has enough voltage. But this battery clearly doesn't like working. As you can see, it's dropping down quite a few volts. And it started lower because as this, as this heating element heats up, the resistance of the element drops. So unfortunately, this battery, this battery, and that battery uh, all have that same behavior. This one is one of the older batteries. And the funny thing is, these two and that one are made in Mexico, or I mean United States. The one that's good is made in Mexico and a lot older. So these, these ones, and I kid you not, uh, it's on the label. I'll actually pull one out real quick. Um, you can see, maybe, somewhere on there, you'll have to pause the video. I'm not gonna get too detailed on it, but these are from NorCal Battery Co. in Stockton. I gotta tell you guys, one of these days, the story of the joke of, of a shop they're running, but more as it comes. Alrighty, so here we are. I have this shelf over here pretty much taken apart. You can see where I painted over um, some soot when we had our, our, our issue in here. But uh, one of the things that's going to happen next week before the new batteries come, this is my healing bench right now. So this battery has one upset cell. These three batteries were all ran really low on water, trying to do a little bit of recovery on them, but I don't think I'm going to get much luck. Uh, that and I'm getting on a plane here in a couple hours, and between now and the next two weeks, I'm not even going to be here to try and heal these at all. So these will probably just go straight onto the, onto the scrap pile, unfortunately. I was able to get four shelves of batteries in here. This one right here is a little... Um, unhappy but I just was trying to get that fourth shelf uh, because I don't know if you guys had seen the graph this is again this was shot a day later than the last clip but last night we had 10 generator cycles um, 
which is way more than what should be happening. So uh, got a fourth shelf up and hooked up. So hopefully that'll get my folks by for a couple weeks. Um, got more of the busing disassembled. We're completely removed on the rack on the right. And you can actually see back here what this looks like going into the inverters and stuff. Inverters are going to stay on these shelving racks, pretty sure, at this point. Um, once I get the new batteries, they'll likely sit down here underneath the inverters temporarily. Um, this whole rack will come out and come apart. So I, I will be eliminating the, the bus bars completely because those new batteries, since it's such a short distance, it's easy just to use some, some thick heavy-duty battery cable to connect onto those uh, prismatic lithium iron phosphate um, batteries so other than that you know these will come out I do plan so if you look and excuse the noise of the fan if you look this floor is pretty hammered uh, I did just vacuum part of it's because I don't know how to paint well I'm messy when I paint so you can see like over here uh, good old vans off the wall shoe marks i wonder who that was uh, but anyway we're gonna probably uh talk to my brother-in-law who works out of kelly Moore paints uh we're gonna try and get this floor looking a bit better looking more more like it's a uh, professional setup so probably a similar grade to the wireways we'll do on the floor and then this will be open uh like i talked about i think in another video this transformer will be used for our well um, I have this on a cart so it's ready to go but either way take my word for it this is a 25 kVA uh, 480 volt to 240 volt single phase or 240 volt to 120 volt single phase transformer but we're gonna use it as a step up transformer going from 240 to 480 volts um, so that way we can run down to our well pump and then step back down to 240 volts to run the well. So what I'll likely do is I'll likely take this wireway and separate it at the coupling right here, remove this section and run a full 10 footer all the way across. So then I can have this transformer over here come down, low voltage disconnect, high voltage disconnect, maybe a small panel. Um, and then from there it'll feed down to our well pump but that's the plan for that. I'm not gonna be doing that immediately, but the point is I'll have the provisions to do so. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, this bus bar is gonna come out. I'll have different, maybe I'll use the same fuse, uh, 300 amp fuse, but one thing I will need because those lithium iron phosphates are such a low internal resistance, um, I'll have some current limiting, um, they're a, a silicon piece. I, I'm not, I don't exactly remember the details, but you'll see here in the next couple of weeks video coming to the channel of what those entail. Um, but anyway, once you know, once these batteries are out of here, this rack will come out. I have a better storage space for some some of my tables and stuff, and you know, everything's everything's really coming together. All uh, I'm gonna put these safety ducks, <laughs> safety devil ducks up over here by the owl. The owl watches over our setup. <laughs> there we go. There's the family watching over everything. So that's about it for this video. And like I said, I'm gonna paint over all this. It's all gonna look nice. Um, you know, it's really coming together. Another thing I'll need to do, my 48 volts that feeds my control panel currently comes down through the wire way up. And that's this conduit right here. And it comes down and I just have a connector and the wires come out. Negative is right here. Positive goes onto the bus over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see right there. And there's a small fuse holder right there. I'm going to need to redo that. I'm not sure exactly how. I'll probably feed it up and over because I need to get into this wireway because I have uh, this guy right here. I crimped. I don't know if you guys can see the pin out. But that's what will tie into this blue inverter so I can turn it off and on through the PLC. So that's how I can handle a low voltage cutout to shut down the inverter. But either way, I'm gonna need to get up in this wire way up here. So I may just run across and come down my two inch conduit right here, the one that comes out right here, and run my power for my PLC in through there. So 
little bit of figuring out to do, but eventually, actually, just so you guys know, um, what my plan is for the future in terms of 48 volts panels and protection and stuff, uh, I do want to get an electrical panel here, a DC uh, electrical panel similar to these these guys right here, but built for DC. Um, and what that'll have is eventually my plan is to have six of these FlexMax controllers. So we have one here, one here. There's KOs right here already set up. And then this gutter is empty right now. Um, but eventually we'll have, you know, the same three at the bottoms, three at the top. And then we'll come up out of the gutter and have a panel of some sort here. But, you know, as, as time goes on, that's cost. So um, we'll just kind of need to play it by ear and budget and we'll get the new battery and see how things go. Um, still a lot of work coming. Uh, I'll be back in town in two weeks. A lot of work to come next trip down. Uh, just getting things prepared for those new lithium batteries. So uh, Some of you guys were wondering why I decided to go against the forklift batteries. It's just again the maintenance and um, One of the biggest things about the lithium iron batteries. I'm looking at is They have such a low internal resistance um, If I'm charging off this inverter right here, this will put out probably around 120 amps peak with that battery it'll take in that full 120 amps and I can charge that battery. The one I'm gonna start with is a 100 amp hour um, and I'll be able to charge that battery in less than an hour. So we get five kilowatt hours of storage, but I can charge it in an hour. So if I can get through the night on five kilowatt hours, or if it's if I can't get through the night on five kilowatt hours, I only need to run the generator for one hour a night. So I'm actually gonna go outside. I'm gonna look at, you guys saw this graph here on how much the generator ran last night. I filled the tank up about midday. So wherever that tank is, you'll see right now how much how much these peaks equate into fuel burning. So here I'm at the generator. This was full last night. So we used a little over a quarter tank. And um, let me see, turn this off. I think the spec sheet's in here. Um, don't believe it's that one, but either way, this has pretty much a 20 gallon tank. So if it burned a quarter of a tank, that's probably closer to six gallons. And um, at $3 and change a gallon, it adds up. So gonna go ahead and fill this bad boy up. Got the pump here, kick it on and we fill. So now we're all good and filled up. These guys will be good for the next couple of days. But uh, for a while there, we were going through about a half tank a night. Um, so it was kind of just ridiculous, the amount of fuel going through. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and stay tuned for next uh, for the next couple of weeks. I'll have some really interesting content, educational content. This has been High Tech Lab. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys for bringing me past 10,000 subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video.